，哎，总共总共就一千二百字嘛。好、啊，怎么样？下午有一个会要招同传，就是之前已经准备很久的一个，然后下午大概四点，啊、嗯、啊，可以了，可以了，好的，行好，稍等一下，好 ，OK 好，嗯好的，嗯嗯好的，马上，嗯，去放那个移动。嗯移动部里面有有活儿什么的，行，现在你都会做数据中心那边的方面哦，那是不会不用上班的。今天工作多吗？我弄。
Dr. Gijoba Group and Government of Pakistan on July 6th. It will be built on build, own, operate and transfer basis. The two power generation facilities, costing $3.917 billion, will be built in Azad Jammu and Kashmir, AJK, and are going to produce 1800 megawatts of clean energy after their completion in 2026. They are also expected to create 8,000 jobs. Chief Minister of Khaiba Pakhtunkhwa, Mahmood Khan inaugurated Havelia Thakut section of Hazara Motorway, costing 133 billion rupees on July 28th. He said that the project is key to the progress and prosperity of the region and will promote tourism and trade activities in the area. This motorway eventually links up with the Karakuram Friendship Highway on the road to China. On May 29th, first bulk cargo ship carrying wheat and urea of Afghan transit trade reached Kavada. This will have positive impacts for the local economy as it will stimulate host of business activities. Another ambitious and much-awaited project of connectivity, ML1, worth $6.8 billion, got approval from the Executive Committee of the National Economic Council on August 5th. ML1, as a mega project of CPEC, will revamp and revolutionize Pakistan Railways through upgradation and dualization of the 1800 km track. This track will run from Karachi to Peshawar, doubling the speed of travel by train, and this will be the biggest modernization of railways in Pakistan. It will open new avenues of connectivity in the region by connecting Pakistan and China to the Central Asian states. Pakistan and China on September 14th signed the development agreement of Rashakai Special Economic Zone, SEZ, under CPEC. Prime Minister Imran Khan, while addressing the signing ceremony, asserted that prioritized development of Rashakai SEZ would play a significant role in socio-economic uplift of KP. It would promote industrialization and create massive employment opportunities in Pakistan. Moreover, he underlined the need to learn from Chinese experience of socio-economic growth. CPEC enjoys consensus of all political parties. President of Pakistan, Dr. Arif Alvi sent a special letter of congratulations to the second conference of the CPEC political parties joint consultation mechanism arranged by the International Department of Communist Party of China and hosted by Pakistan China Institute. The letter was read by Chairman Senate Sadiq Sanjarani. The Chinese President Xi Jinping responded to this special letter in which he said, as a landmark project of the Belt and Road Initiative, the CPEC is of great significance to the further development of the China-Pakistan All-Weather Strategic Cooperative Partnership and the building of a closer China-Pakistan community of shared future. The JCM was organized on the theme of working together to promote economic development and improve people's lives through high-quality CPEC cooperation on August 20th. All political parties viewed CPEC as a game-changer and a guarantor of better tomorrow for Pakistan's 220 million people. It was attended by nine political parties, including Pakistan Tariq e Insaf, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, the Pakistan People's Party, the Balochistan Awami Party, the National Party, the jamiat e ulma islam the Awami National Party, the jamaat e islami and Pakhtunkhwa Mili Awami Party, as well as leading officials from relevant government departments and representatives of business community of the two countries, like National Development and Reform Commission. COVID outbreak further strengthened this cooperation. During the outbreak, Chinese companies involved in the construction of corridor projects were actively contributing to the prevention and control of epidemics in their localities, donating medical supplies to local governments, schools and hospitals. According to Pakistan Economic Survey, PES,
2019-2020. The early harvest projects of the CPEC have created more than 85,000 direct jobs for Pakistanis. More jobs will be created by the projects signed in the last two months. Let's listen to the Pakistanis working on different CPEC projects. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Nadeem Ali, I am working here for 4 years in Anglo Thurgood Power Plant. I didn't have a lot of work here, I didn't have a lot of work here, I didn't have a lot of work here. I started working here at Anglo Thurgood Power Plant and I started working here at the start. स्टार्ट से लेकर अभी तक उन्होंने लोकल लोगों की बहुत कंट्रीब्यूशन रही है उन्होंने बहुत जो है ना इस प्रोजेक्ट में हिस्सा लिया है और उसके बाद उन्होंने रोजगार उनका रोजगार का मौका मिला है उनको और लोकल मार्केट में और लोकल जो है ना बिजनेस में भी बहुत सारा इजाफा हुआ है इस प्रोजेक्ट के लगने के बाद मैं काफ़ी अच्छे से गाँव पर ड्यूटी कर रहा हूँ बारिश आने से पहले ये गेट पास इस्तेमाल होता था जो कि इसके ऊपर एक नंबरिंग होता है यहाँ भी लिखा जाता है लेकिन बारिश आने के बाद ये एक प्रोसेस जो है वो ईमेल के थ्रू की जाती है ताकि लोगों का आपस में कंट्रैक्ट कम हो और बारिश से खासी तदफीर हो मेरा नाम मोहन है मैं मिट्टी में रहती हूँ और पहले तो हम घर पे कुछ काम करते थे उसके बाद हमें पता चला ड्राइविंग का कोर्स चल रहा है तो हमें आके आके ट्रेनिंग स्टार्ट की उसके बाद हमने पहले छोटी गाड़ी पे फिर डम्पर पर आ गए हैं पहले तो थोड़ी घर में परेशानी हुई थी उसके बाद हम यहाँ पर आए काम किए उसके बाद हमें घर में थोड़ा खुशहाली लग रही है आगे भी इन हम आगे बढ़ के ड्राइविंग करके आगे रोजगार कमा के अपनी फैमिली और बच्चों को भी खुश रखेंगे उसको भी अपने मुकाम पर पहचाएंगे ओके हाउ डज इट फील वर्किंग विद योर चाइनीज कॉलेक्स वेल वर्किंग विद चाइनीज कॉलेक्स इज डेफिनेटली अ गुड एक्सपीरियंस वी हैव बीन एबल टू लर्न सम न्यू थिंग्स अबाउट टेक्निकल नॉलेज एंड आल्सो रिलेटेड टू द कल्चरल नॉर्म Assalamu alaikum I am Arslan Aslam working in commercial department it is a wonderful one year experience of working here in CPIGC CPEC is also contributing to the socio economic development of the local communities China Foundation for Peace and Development CFPD helped to build a school in Gwadar it took only 10 months to build Fakir Primary School during the construction process local people visited the site every day looking forward to the completion of the new school the local people praised the chinese for their kindness and offered a lot of help pm imran khan on several occasions reaffirmed pakistan's commitment to cpec and praised china for the support dekhi pakistan ka jo future hai wo china ke sath hame clear ho jana chahiye hum hame wazeh ho jana chahiye ki ye jo mulk ne tarakki karni hai हमारी डेवलपमेंट है वो चाइना के साथ अब जुड़ी हुई है और हमारी बड़ी खुशकस्मती है कि वो एक हमारा ऐसा दोस्त है जो हमारे हर अच्छे बुरे वक्त को पॉलिटिकली खड़ा रहा है और हमारे दोस्त इस तरह पॉलिटिकली नहीं खड़े रहे जिस तरह चाइना खड़ा रहा है हर जगह पे चाइना ने हमें डिफेंड किया पॉलिटिक और हमारी खुशकस्मत यह है कि वो उसको सबसे तेज़ी से दुनिया में बढ़ती हुई इकॉनमी है और मुझे नहीं नज़र आ रहा कि कोई भी दुनिया में मुल्क उसका मुकाबला करेगा आगे और हम तो इसलिए हमें जो हमारे टाइज हैं वो हम और मजबूत कर रहे हैं चाइना के साथ और अपनी लैंग्वेजेस मजबूत कर रहे हैं सी पैक एक बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी है चाइना को भी पाकिस्तान की बड़ी ज़रूरत है पाकिस्तान की स्ट्रेटिजिक लोकेशन है और चाइना को भी इस चीज़ की अहमियत का पता है और हमारी जितनी भी लैंग्वेजेस बढ़ती जाएंगी हमारा आगे फ़ायदा है आर रिलेशनशिप विद चाइना इज़ बेटर दैन एवर बिफोर फॉर अस द वे वी लुक एट इट फ्राम पाकिस्तान Our future, economic future, is now linked to China. China is growing at a faster pace than probably any other country, uh, and and Pakistan, uh, you know, can really benefit from the way China has developed, the way it has lifted people out of poverty. Zhao Lijian, the spokesperson for Foreign Ministry of China, applauded warm remarks by PM Imran Khan on China-Pakistan relations and said. that china stands ready to work together with pakistan to advance cooperation in all sectors and forge a closer community with a shared future in a new era to bring more benefits to the two peoples the foreign minister shah mahmood qureshi on september 10th held a meeting with the chinese state councilor and foreign minister wang ji on the sidelines of the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers meeting in Moscow. 
Wang Ji emphasized that China would continue to provide Pakistan with anti-epidemic support until Pakistan completely overcomes the epidemic. China would also continue to ensure high-quality construction of CPEC and cooperate in agriculture cooperation. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi reiterated Pakistan's commitment to one China policy. President Xi Jinping, in his speech to the World Health Assembly on May 18, 2020, underlined the need for putting people first in the fight against coronavirus and also announced that any vaccine developed by China for COVID-19 would be made accessible to all as a global public good. CPEC as a strategic national project, which is the centerpiece of Pakistan-China friendship, also is firmly inspired from these abiding principles as a guarantor of a prosperous future for Pakistan and its people. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The sixth China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Media Forum starts now. The forum is hosted by the Chinese Embassy in Pakistan and organized by China Economic Net and Pakistan China Institute. This year, the forum will focus on post-epidemic China-Pakistan media cooperation. The guests of today's forum are Mohammad Sadiq Sanjarani, Chairman Senate of Pakistan. Senator Azam Khan Sawati, Federal Minister for Railways. Jung Ching Tong, President and Editor-in-Chief of Economic Daily. Mr. Mohammad Jahanzeb Khan, Deputy Chairman of Pakistani Planning Commission. Senator Mushahid Hussain Sayed, Chairman of Pakistani Senate Foreign Affairs Committee and also Chairman of Pakistan China Institute. His Excellency Nong Rong, Chinese Ambassador to Pakistan. His Excellency Moinul Haq, Pakistani Ambassador to China. Mr. Tian Yu Hong, Executive Secretary of the All China Journalists Association. Mr. Ni Si Yi, Deputy Director, Office of Editor in Chief, Xinhua News Agency. Ms. Zhao Chiao, Director, Department of Urdu, CMG Asian African Languages Center. CCTV. Mr. Modassir Tipu, Director General, China, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Pakistan. Mr. Mustafa Heather Sayed, Executive Director, Pakistan China Institute, and other guests from Chinese and Pakistani government departments, media enterprises, as well as institutions. Thank you to all of you for being present today at the sixth CPEC Media Forum. Here, I would like to remind all guest speakers to please pay attention to the time limitation, and we will also remind you in due time if necessary. Firstly, let's welcome Mr. Chung Ching Dong, President and Editor-in-Chief of the Distinguished Chairman Sani Sanjivani, guests, media professionals, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to meet all the new friends online in this special way at the end of the year 2020. In 2015, during Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Pakistan, leaders of the two countries reached a consensus on enhancing media exchanges and the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Media Forum came into being. After six years, the forum has become the most influential media exchange event of the two countries. On this occasion, I would like to thank the Chinese Embassy in Pakistan, the Pakistan China Institute, and other relevant people for their outstanding contributions and general assistance to this end. Special thanks also goes to Chairman Senate of Pakistan, 
Mr. Sanjivani, and all the distinguished guests and media friends who are here today for their strong support. The sudden outbreak of COVID-19 has made people around the world feel that mankind is a community with a shared group. It has also reaffirmed the traditional friendship between our two peoples, which is higher than mountains, deeper than oceans, and sweeter than honey. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, the medium for professionals from China and Pakistan have been on the front line of the epidemic, reporting the latest development of the pandemic, spreading knowledge on epidemic prevention and control, and writing talking stories of cooperation to convey confidence and hope to the country and the international community. Here, I would like to extend sincere greetings and high tribute to the media professionals who have been at the forefront of that epidemic containment. The recently released the 14 five-year plan, the long range of objectives to the year 2035 by the CPP Committee called for a high quality development of the BRI. It requires us to adhere to the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, shared benefits, increasing open, green, and clean cooperation. We should deepen practical cooperation, strengthen security, promote common development. This has charted a course of providing important guidance for us. As an important project, it has, has maintained a momentum of strong development since its launch in 2013, greatly contributing to Pakistan's national development to regional and activity. We hope that CPAC is entering a new phase of high quality development. The media is playing a irreplaceable role, and there is a broad space for media cooperation. First of all, in the face of an increasingly complex international environment, the media of China and Pakistan will proactively step up cooperation and assume due responsibilities, which would adhere to an objective stance and scientific spirit in infrastructure, energy, science and technology, democracy, and tell good stories on CPAC and China Pakistan cooperation. We should pay close attention to public opinion, better inform the international community about CPAC. Second, in the face of the growing conflict in public opinion, China and Pakistan medium should take joint actions and form synergy in firmly opposing inactive propaganda against CPAC. We should respond to public questions and clarify rumors. At the fourth medium forum of Beijing, the two sides jointly established the CPAC Rapid Response Network for public opinion. Over the past two years and more, it has played a positive role in responding to public opinion and upholding CPAC. Thirdly, facing the accelerating technology revolution, media of China and Pakistan should learn from each other to achieve common progress. We'd like to further the all round new media cooperation with Pakistan by sharing the benefits from communication revolution driven by 5G and other technologies, exploring the application of blockchain, cloud computing, other cutting-edge technologies in media, and enhancing the exchanges and communications of our media, both online and offline, after the pandemic ends. Today, the world is undergoing major changes that have never been seen for a century. The new round of technological and industrial revolution deepens while the COVID-19 pandemic profoundly, giving multiple changes to the world's economic prospects. In 2021, we believe that in 2021, China and Pakistan will celebrate the 70th anniversary of the establishment of a diplomatic relation. We will tell a good story about the development of CPAC. Now, I wish a great success to the six CPAC Media Forum. Thank you all. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Mustafa Heather Sayed, Executive Director, Pakistan China Institute, to present his welcoming address. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Honorable Chairman, Senator of Pakistan, Federal Minister for Railways, Senator Moshad Hussain Sayyid, His Excellency Ambassador Noam Rong, His Excellency Ambassador Moinul Haq, His Excellency the Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission of Pakistan, Mr. Jeng Ching Dong, President of China Economic Daily, 
Director General China, Mr. Mudassar Tipu, Mr. Tian Yu Hong, <clears throat> Dajia Hao, good morning and assalamu alaikum. I particularly want to welcome His Excellency Nong Rong to Pakistan and I think this is his first international uh, participation in an international CPEC event since his arrival. So thank you Ambassador Nong Rong for taking the time and giving the sixth CPEC uh, media forum the due attention and priority. The CPEC media forum was first initiated in 2014 to give a platform to our respective countries' media to better coordinate and cooperate with each other, particularly in the light of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. The CPEC Media Forum was held annually, alternating between Pakistan and China, institutionalizing cooperation between the media, policy makers, and think tanks to better articulate CPEC and its impact as well as counter the disinformation campaign that CPEC faces. In this regard, the Pakistan-China Institute and the China Economic Net launched the Rapid Response Information Network last year, which identifies fake news and deconstructs it with facts. The PCI also launched a monograph titled CPEC, separating facts from fiction that listed the predominant false reporting regarding CPEC and gave evidence-backed arguments that countered them. I'm proud to announce that Pakistan China Institute will also be publishing the governance of China uh, part two and also the governance of China part three, which are authored by President Xi Jinping and we will be launching them in Urdu in Pakistan next year. The CPEC Media Forum has also helped to promote a better understanding of China and Pakistan. The forum has been inclusive with wide ranging participation from academia, journalists, business leaders and politicians. As we know, China is a civilization that dates back to more than 5000 years. China itself has been a victim of imperialism during the 100 years of humiliation. The CPC's primary, primary goal under Chairman Xi Jinping is to deliver a moderately prosperous society at home while building a community with a shared future for mankind abroad. China is the only country in the United Nations Security Council that hasn't fought a war outside of its borders since World War II. According to a 2015 Pew survey, which is a think tank based out of Washington and does polling and documents trends, 88% of Chinese believe that when their children grow up, they will be better off financially than their parents, compared to a median of 51% in other emerging countries and 32% in the United States of America. Into 2018, 134 million Chinese left China to travel and 134 million Chinese came back to China. These are a few facts which demonstrate where China has arrived since its opening up and reform and where it's headed to. Finally, I thank the China Economic Daily for its steadfast partnership with the Pakistan-China Institute and the CPEC Media Forum has truly been a trailblazer in delivering a nuanced, factually grounded understanding of CPEC to Pakistan, China, and the region. And I thank the distinguished speakers and guests for their time and priority that they have given for this meeting. And I wish this forum all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mustafa. Indeed, trailblazer is the word, and the CPEC Media Forum does set a very important precedent on how to manage information sharing. Uh, today, increasingly, we realize this is a very important initiative. Now, we will watch a short video to learn a bit about the progress of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Uh, let's watch this video about 12 to 15 minutes. <laughs> The all-weather
whether friendship between Pakistan and China has always withstood the test of time in the past. The resilience of this friendship can be gauged from the fact that even the global pandemic like COVID-19 did not affect it. When the whole world was struggling to fight COVID-19 pandemic, CPEC was promoted and expanded with $11 billion worth of new projects. Even the international media was flooded with the news of the rejuvenation of CPEC. To meet the growing energy demand, a tripartite agreement was signed on June 25th between a Chinese company and the governments of Pakistan and China for the construction of 1,124 megawatt Kohala hydropower project costing $2.4 billion. The project has been awarded to Kohala Hydropower Company Limited, which is a subsidiary of China Three Gorges Corporation. Similarly, the agreement of the 700.7 megawatt Azad Patan hydropower project costing $1.517 billion under CPEC was signed between China Gijoba Group and Government of Pakistan on July 6th. It will be built on build, own, operate and transfer basis. The two power generation facilities costing $3.917 billion will be built in Azad Jammu and Kashmir, AJK and are going to produce 1800 megawatts of clean energy after their completion in 2026. They are also expected to create 8000 jobs. Chief Minister of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Mahmood Khan inaugurated Havelia Thakut section of Hazara Motorway, costing 133 billion rupees on July 28th. He said that the project is key to the progress and prosperity of the region and will promote tourism and trade activities in the area. This motorway eventually links up with the Karakuram Friendship Highway on the road to China. On May 29th, first bulk cargo ship carrying wheat and urea of Afghan transit trade reached Kavada. This will have positive impacts for the local economy as it will stimulate host of business activities. Another ambitious and much awaited project of connectivity, ML1, worth $6.8 billion, got approval from the Executive Committee of the National Economic Council on August 5th. ML1, as a mega project of CPEC, will revamp and revolutionize Pakistan Railways through upgradation and dualization of the 1800 kilometer track. This track will run from Karachi to Peshawar, doubling the speed of travel by train, and this will be the biggest modernization of railways in Pakistan. It will open new avenues of connectivity in the region by connecting Pakistan and China to the Central Asian states. Pakistan and China on September 14th signed the development agreement of Russia Kai Special Economic Zone, SEZ, under CPEC. Prime Minister Imran Khan, while addressing the signing ceremony, asserted that prioritized development of Russia Kai SEZ would play a significant role in socio-economic uplift of KP. It would promote industrialization and create massive employment opportunities in Pakistan. Moreover, he underlined the need to learn from Chinese experience of socio-economic growth. CPEC enjoys consensus of all political parties. President of Pakistan, Dr. Arif Alvi sent a special letter of congratulations to the second conference of the CPEC political parties joint consultation mechanism arranged by the International Department of Communist Party of China and hosted by Pakistan China Institute. The letter was read by Chairman Senate Sadiq Sanjarani. The Chinese President Xi Jinping responded to this special letter in which he said, as a landmark project of the Belt and Road Initiative, the CPEC is of great significance to the further development of the China-Pakistan All-Weather Strategic Cooperative Partnership and the building of a closer China-Pakistan community of shared future. The JCM was organized on the theme of working together to promote economic development 
and improve people's lives through high quality CPEC cooperation on August 20th. All political parties viewed CPEC as a game changer and a guarantor of better tomorrow for Pakistan's 220 million people. It was attended by nine political parties, including Pakistan Tehreeki Saf, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, the Pakistan People's Party, the Balochistan Awami Party, the National Party, the jamiat e ulmai islam the Awami National Party, the jamaat e islami and pakhtun Kwa Mili Awami Party, as well as leading officials from relevant government departments and representatives of business community of the two countries, like National National Development and Reform Commission. COVID outbreak further strengthened this cooperation. During the outbreak, Chinese companies involved in the construction of corridor projects were actively contributing to the prevention and control of epidemics in their localities, donating medical supplies to local governments, schools and hospitals. According to Pakistan Economic Survey, PES, 2019-2020, the early harvest projects of the CPEC have created more than 85,000 direct jobs for Pakistanis. More jobs will be created by the projects signed in the last two months. Let's listen to the Pakistanis working on different CPEC projects. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Nadeem Ali, I am here for 4 years in Anglo Thurgood Power Plant. I didn't have a lot of work here, I didn't have a lot of work here, I didn't have a lot of work here. I started here at the Power Plant, I started here at the Power Plant, I started here at the Power Plant, and I started here at the Power Plant, and I started here at the Power Plant. और उसके बाद उन्होंने रोजगार का मौका कर मौका मिला है उनको और लोकल मार्केट में और लोकल जो है ना बिजनेस में भी बहुत सारी मदद हुआ है इस प्रोजेक्ट के लगने के बाद मैं काफी अच्छे से ऐसे कितने जस्ट ऐसे इतना मीटिंग एंड करें आपने ये गेट पास इस्तेमाल होता था क्योंकि इसके पर एक नंबरिंग लेकर यहाँ भी लेकर लेकिन वारिस आने के बाद ये प्रोसेस जो है वो ईमेल के थ्रू की जाती है ताकि लोगों का आपस में कंट्रैक्ट कम हो और वारिस से खासी तत्पीर हो मेरा नाम मोहन ही है मैं मिट्टी में रहती हूँ और पहले तो हम घर पे कुछ काम करते थे उसके बाद हमें पता चला ड्राइविंग का कोर्स चल रहा है तो हमें आके आके ट्रेनिंग स्टार्ट की उसके बाद हमने पहले छोटी गाड़ी पे फिर डम्पर पे आ गए हैं हाँ पहले तो थोड़ी घर में परेशानी हुई थी उसके बाद हम यहाँ पर आए काम किए उसके बाद हमें घर में थोड़ा खुशहाली लग रही है आगे भी इन हम आगे बढ़ के ड्राइविंग करके आगे रोजगार कमा के अपनी फैमिली और बच्चों को भी खुश रखेंगे उसको भी अपने मुकाम पर पहचाएँगे Okay, how does it feel working with your Chinese colleagues? Well, working with Chinese colleagues is uh, definitely a good experience. Uh, we have been able to learn some new things about uh, technical knowledge and also related to the cultural norm. Assalamu alaikum. I am Aslan Aslam, working in commercial department. It is a wonderful one-year experience of working here in CPIGC. CPEC is also contributing to the socio-economic development of the local communities. China Foundation for Peace and Development, CFPD, helped to build a school in Gawadar. It took only 10 months to build Fakir Primary School. During the construction process, local people visited the site every day, looking forward to the completion of the new school. The local people praised the Chinese for their kindness and offered a lot of help. PM Imran Khan on several occasions reaffirmed Pakistan's commitment to CPEC and praised China for the support. Look, Pakistan's future is with China. We need to be clear. We need to be clear that this country has worked with our development with China. और हमारी बड़ी खुशकिस्मती है कि वो एक हमारा ऐसा दोस्त है जो हमारे हर अच्छे बुरे वक्त पे पॉलिटिकली खड़ा रहा है और हमारे दोस्त इस तरह पॉलिटिकली नहीं खड़े रहे जिस तरह चाइना खड़ा रहा है हर जगह पे चाइना ने हमें डिफेंड किया पॉलिटिकली और हमारी खुशकिस्मती है कि वो इस वक्त सबसे तेज़ी से दुनिया में बढ़ती हुई इकॉनमी है और मुझे नहीं नज़र आ रहा कि कोई भी दुनिया में मुल्क उसका मुकाबला करेगा आगे और हम तो इसलिए हमें जो हमारे टाइज हैं वो हम और मजबूत कर रहे हैं चाइना के साथ और अपनी लैंग्वेजेस मजबूत कर रहे हैं सी पैक एक बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी है चाइना को भी पाकिस्तान की बड़ी ज़रूरत है पाकिस्तान की स्ट्रेटिजिक लोकेशन है और चाइना को भी इस चीज़ की अहमियत का पता है 
और हमारी जितनी भी लिंकेजेस बढ़ती जाएंगी हमारा आगे फायदा आर रिलेशनशिप विद चाइना इज बेटर देन एवर बिफोर फॉर अस द वे वी लुक एट इट फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान आर फ्यूचर इकोनॉमिक फ्यूचर इज नाउ लिंक टू चाइना चाइना इज ग्रोइंग एट अ फास्ट पेस एंड प्रॉब्लम एनी अदर कंट्री एंड एंड पाकिस्तान यू नो कैन रियली बेनिफिट फ्रॉम द वे चाइना हैज डेवलप द वे इट हैज लिफ्टेड पीपल आउट ऑफ पॉवर्टी Zhao Lijian, the spokesperson for Foreign Ministry of China, applauded warm remarks by PM Imran Khan on China-Pakistan relations and said that China stands ready to work together with Pakistan to advance cooperation in all sectors and forge a closer community with a shared future in a new era to bring more benefits to the two peoples. The Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on September 10th held a meeting with the Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Ji on the sidelines of the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers meeting in Moscow. Wang Ji emphasized that China would continue to provide Pakistan with anti-epidemic support until Pakistan completely overcomes the epidemic. China would also continue to ensure high quality construction of CPEC and cooperate in agriculture cooperation. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi reiterated Pakistan's commitment to one China policy. President Xi Jinping in his speech to the World Health Assembly on May 18, 2020 underlined the need for putting people first in the fight against coronavirus and also announced that any vaccine developed by China for COVID-19 would be made accessible to all as a global public good. CPEC as a strategic national project which is the centerpiece of Pakistan China friendship also is firmly inspired from these abiding principles as a guarantor of a prosperous future for Pakistan and its people Thank you PCI for such a meaningful compilation. I think people who have been observing CPEC in Pakistan as well as China understand that this is a cooperation meant to bring co a better quality of lives to our people and meant to improve um, the shared future that we conceive. So thank you for showing us in a concise video Uh, what all that entails now i would like to warmly welcome mr sadik sanjalani chairman senate of pakistan to offer his welcoming address thank you excellency mr nong rong the ambassador of china in pakistan honorable senator mushahid hussain sayyid honorable senator nasibullah bazai honorable senator uh, sajjad turi Mr. Jan Zeb Khan, Deputy Chairman, Planning Commission of Pakistan. Mr. Liang Kao, it's difficult to pronounce, and uh, Mr. Zhang Cheng Jing Dong, and other friends and colleagues. Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon. Uh, it's a honor to be invited as chief guest at this year's CPEC. media forum after the success of five cpec media forum organized in last five years i hope the sixth forum will bear fruitful results i would like to appreciate pakistan china institute and china economic net for organizing and the embassy of the people's republic Republic of China for hosting such a timely and important event dear friends since its inception in 
China Pakistan economic corridor has achieved significant milestones through joint efforts of governments enterprises and people of both countries the first phase of cpec which focused on energy and infrastructure projects met its successful completion and now the second phase is set to boost pakistan china cooperation in agriculture and initiate an era of industrialization through the establishment of special economic zones the zones will play a pivotal role in pakistan's fight against poverty we are really thankful to china for sharing its experience of development with us which is a source of guidance for policy makers in pakistan media has played a very important role in this mention of facts on cpec which has resulted in cpec becoming a household name in pakistan to events like cpec media forum both countries get an excellent opportunities to consolidate the existing all weather friendship this all weather friendship needs to be highlighted to the media the exchange of news and journalist interaction between pakistan and china is the need of the hour which will take our diplomatic social and economic relations to new heights ladies and gentlemen pakistan extended medical and moral support to china while it was fighting the pandemic at home moreover we passed a resolution in the senate which acknowledged china robust measures to deal with corona virus and commended their efforts to make the pakistanis mainly students in wuhan feel at home during this critical time the senate resolution also commended chinese courage strength and ensured full cooperation to deal with the threat of corona virus china also provided pakistan with much needed medical support which announced our capacity to fight the pandemic for which we are grateful to our chinese friends and brothers and sisters and government it is evident from the documentary cpec cooperation during covid-19 made by pakistan china institute that china that cpec remained resilient even during a global pandemic and progressed ahead the conference of cpec political parties joint consultative mechanism hosted on august 20 this year brought the representatives of all major political parties on one platform the representatives developed consensus on cpec and vowed to ensure high quality construction of the corridor similarly the executive committee of the national economic council acnic on august 5th approved the ml1 project worth 6.8 billion moreover pakistan and china signed various hydropower projects to generate clean energy most importantly the first transit consignment of bulk cargo through gawadar to afghanistan started on july 27 the afghan transit trade would change the socio economic fate of the whole region preparations for the upcoming 10th joint coordination committee on cpec are in full swing as china pakistan cooperation proceeds to greater depth the senate of pakistan shall play a greater role in extending all possible cooperation to the media of both countries 
to develop greater understanding and cooperation on the issues of common interest of both countries. On this note, I wish all the best of luck for a fruitful outcome to today's conference. Thank you. Long live Pakistan-China friendship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sanjarani. Indeed, long live Pakistan-China friendship. Um, thank you for highlighting the progress under CPEC prior to and during the pandemic, and also expressing your support for this initiative for the CPEC Media Forum and media cooperation between China and Pakistan. Now we will move to our next section of the forum where we will have our keynote speeches. So I will firstly like to very warmly welcome His Excellency Nong Rong, Chinese ambassador to Pakistan to make a keynote speech. Excellency Mr. Mushahid Hussein Said, Chairman of the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee of Pakistan, Honorable Mr. Azam Khan Swati, Federal Minister of the Railways of Pakistan, Honorable Mr. Muhammad Jahanzab Khan, Deputy Chairman Planning Commission, Honorable Mr. Moi Nohak, Ambassador to Pakistan to China, Honorable Mr. Muhammad. Madasir Tipu, Director General of China, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Pakistan. Honorable Mr. Zheng Qingdong, President and Editor-in-Chief of Economic Daily. Honorable Mr. Tian Yu Hong, Executive Secretary of the All China Journalists Association. Honorable Mr. Ni Si Yi, Deputy Director, Office of Editor-in-Chief, Xinhua News Agency. Honorable Ms. Zhao Chao, Director, Department of Urdu, CMG Asian and African Languages Programming Center. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to attend the sixth China Pakistan Economic Corridor Media Forum. Thank you, Chairman Sanjurani, for attending the opening ceremony of the forum and made a warm speech. On behalf of the Chinese Embassy in Pakistan, I wish this media forum a big success. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the participants today and all the friends in China and Pakistan for your efforts and contribution to promoting China-Pakistan relations and CPAC. As an important pilot project of the Belt and Road Initiative, and a demonstration project of China-Pakistan cooperation. CPAC plays a significant role in promote the in-depth development of the all-weather strategic cooperation partnership and high-quality growth of the Belt and Road Initiative. Today, I'm glad to see so many friends gathered online to discuss and bring some suggestions for the BRI and CPAC. It reinforces my confidence that the CPAC has been highly valued and sincerely safeguarded by all sectors of society in China and Pakistan as it meets people's aspiration, wins the people's hearts and benefits people's livelihood. As the expositor, promoter and disseminator of CPAC, media plays a unique and important role. In recent years, China and Pakistan have created a series of liaison mechanisms and new platforms for cultural cooperation. Under the framework of the Joint Cooperation Committee of CPAC, a working group on international cooperation and coordination has been set up to encourage the media and think tanks of the two countries to strengthen cooperation and provide intellectual support for the construction of CPAC. We are pleased to see that the second meeting of CPAC Joint Working Group on International Cooperation and Cooperation was convened last Friday. The meeting decided to encourage bilateral cooperation regarding CPAC in media, film, television, and the publishing industry, and welcome think tanks, experts, and scholars from the two countries to have bilateral and multilateral exchanges about CPAC construction to exert a more profound impact and promote high quality development of BRI. Since its inception in 2015, CPAC Media Forum 
has brought together the government's business communities, media, think tanks, and other sectors of China and Pakistan to focus on the construction of CPAC, tell stories of, of China-Pakistan cooperation, and spread the spirit of mutual assistance, openness, equality, mutual benefit, and win-win cooperation, virtually contributing to closer people-to-people -people ties and economic and social growth. With the joint efforts of the two governments, enterprises, and all sectors of the society, fruitful results have been achieved in CPAC cooperation, which have made great contributions to Pakistan's national construction and regional interconnectivity. As shown in the opening documentary, in the face of the impact of the COVID-19 with the joint efforts of China and Pakistan, CPAC has sparked against the trend showing strong resilience and vitality without stopping work or laying off staff despite rigorous pandemic containment measures. The staff working under CPAC have worked hand in hand to overcome the difficulties and continue to write a moving story of China-Pakistan friendship. CPAC have put into practice that the Belt and Road Initiative is the road of cooperation, health, recovery, and growth. Ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, the fifth plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee deliberated and adopted the proposals for pro formulating the 14th five-year plan for national economic and social development in the long-range objectives through the year 2035, laying out a grand blueprint for China's development in the coming period. Based on a scientific analysis of the new stage of China's development, China will stay committed to the new development philosophy and actively foster a new developed paradigm with domestic circulation as the mainstay and domestic and international circulations reinforcing each other. Under the new development paradigm, China's market potential will be fully unleashed. The door to the outside world will be further opened. The high quality development of China's development will certainly provide important opportunities for the development of Pakistan and other countries along the BRI and even countries across the globe. In the next five years, China will promote the high quality development of BRI, advance CPAC projects with high standards as an important pilot project of BRI. CPAC should seize the opportunity to take the lead in achieving high quality development and benefit more from the new development paradigm of dual circulations. Based on successful construction and operation of existing projects, we will channel more resources to industry, agriculture, science and technology, and people's livelihood so that the achievements of CPAC will benefit more ordinary people in Pakistan. In the next five years, China will steadfastly expand all round opening up and explore more opportunities for Pakistan to expand its export to China. With a population of 1.4 billion and a middle income group of more than 400 million, China's domestic retail market is expected to exceed 6 trillion US dollars this year, and its cumulative import volume expected to exceed 22 trillion US dollars in the next 10 years. After the entry into force of the second phase of CPFTA this year, the proportion of Zero tariff products between the two countries has increased to 75%. This is conducive to Pakistan's expansion of exports to China, promoting economic recovery and resolving the issue of trade imbalance in the course of development. In the next five years, China will uphold the concept of openness cooperation, solidarity, and win-win spirit to help Pakistan achieve its development. We achieved of Pakistan's government to build Naya Pakistan 
and will deepen exchanges with packets on governance, share experience in poverty alleviation and reduction, help packets and develop industrial manufacturing, attract more foreign investment, promote the alignment of development strategies between the two countries and work together to build a closer China Pakistan community of shared future in the new era. Ladies and gentlemen, CPAC is a valuable asset shared by the two peoples and it is worth cherishing. It has also created huge potential for media cooperation. I hope that the media of China and Pakistan will play a more active role as a true stories of China-Pakistan cooperation and consolidate the all-weather friendship between the Iron Brothers. I hope you can continue to adhere to the principles of Happiness and fairness, use fact based reports and comments to expose and review lies and show the world of women cooperation and development. Now, I wish the sixth CPAC Media Forum a great success. Long live China's friendship. Thank you all. Thank you, Ambassador, for your presence. Thank you. 大使的支持。I would now to welcome His Excellency Moinul Haq, Pakistani Ambassador to China, for his keynote speech. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Chairman, Senate, Mr. Uh, Honorable Senator, His Excellency, Ambassador Nong Rong. Honorable Senators, Mr. Jahanzeb Khan, uh, Deputy Chairman, Plan Commission, Mr. Jiang Qinghang, President of the China Economic Net, senior representatives of uh, various media houses, both in Pakistan and China, uh, Respected journalists, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, let me congratulate uh, the Chinese embassy in Islamabad, uh, China Economic Net, and Pakistan to host and organizing this sixth uh, CPAC Media Forum. And thank you for inviting me to share my thoughts. Uh, it's very happy and good to see my friend and colleague, Ambassador Nong in Islamabad, and I do hope that he has well settled now. I'm confident that uh, the fruitful exchanges of today in this forum will enhance media cooperation between our two countries uh, and help us evolve a correct and objective narrative of CPAC and BRI for both the significance not only for the dissemination of news, but also due to its ever increasing role in national development and growth of interstate relations. The growth of social media uh, platforms uh, has amplified media outreach and its importance for shaping public narrative uh, and as well as influencing uh, general public and intelligentsia. Such Powerful is media's grasp today that it's no longer a mere peripheral force in our societies, but in fact, a very formidable vehicle for policy inputs and societal change. During the pandemic, media played a key role in fighting the disease. It assisted the governments to raise awareness about the disease and preventive measures. When we were in lockdowns, it helped us connected and informed. When we were feeling isolated and depressed, it entertained us and lifted our spirits. And more importantly, the media in the two countries fostered friendship and solidarity between our two countries and people during these difficult times. And very strongly, they promoted the, the help that the two countries uh, had had for each other during this pandemic. 
the media cooperation uh, has been very important over the years uh, and has played a historic role in promoting our bilateral relations. It is due to the professionalism and patriotism of our media organizations and journalists that Pakistan-China friendship has evolved into an iron brotherhood and all, what, all weathers uh, ties, permeating across all sections of our society. Our journalists and reporters keenly observed the sentiments of bilateral trust, understanding and admiration at the leadership level and spread this message of paternal love and affection to every corner of our two countries. Distinguished guests, Pakistan is one of the earliest and enthusiastic proponents of President Xi's uh, Belt and Road Initiative and has emphatically endorsed its philosophy for win-win cooperation and regional economic integration. As the pilot project of BRI, CPEC, stellar success uh, is, is a testimony, testimony of it that Pakistan has now surmounted the chronic energy crisis and laid out a solid infrastructure network for subsequent national development and growth. Phase two of CPAC is now aimed at people-centric progress to make it a high quality demonstration project of PRI. Dear friends, two days back, the meeting of CPAC joint working group on international cooperation and uh, coordination was held in Urumqi. In fact, I'm, I'm speaking to you from a hotel room in Urumqi where I had come for this, for this meeting. It's, it's uh, freezing cold outside, but inside I'm feeling the warmth generated by the friendship of two, of two countries. So this meeting was held and in this meeting, uh, we ensured that CPEC remains open, uh, transparent and inclusive. So therefore the two countries have decided and agreed to open up CPAC to third party participation. But despite uh, BRI's universal success and uh, CPAC's visible and tangible dividends and gains for Pakistan, it is unfortunate that some voices in certain countries have taken a highly prejudiced view of CPAC to under undermine its accomplishments and obfuscate its future possibilities and expansion. They resort to fish, wishful distortion of facts and fabrication of lies. It is ironical that this propaganda is spearheaded by those who claim to be the flag bearers of economic integration, regional connectivity and transparency and openness. So distinguished guests confronted with such challenge it is imperative that media organizations and opinion makers of our two countries should devise a dispassionate, concerted, and sustained media strategy to expose these intentions, uh, these ill uh, intentions of our adversaries and highlight the success and significance of CPAP. To pursue this objective, now let me propose a few ideas here. Firstly, our media houses should undertake a fair and objective assessment of BRI. I highlight, I highlight its universal legitimacy and success for spurring economic growth and development in partner countries. And at the same time, the discourse on CPAC should particularly bring to fore its concrete and tangible achievements for addressing Pakistan's energy crisis expansion of our development infrastructure and role in socio-economic prosperity for the people of Pakistan. Secondly, our media houses should galvanize public support for our bilateral relations, educate masses about the historic significance of this bilateral friendship and its strategic importance for both, both the countries. No media strategy is successful without stirring hearts of our people to the symphony of friendship of our two countries. Thirdly, uh, should help expand bilateral 
cultural linkages and people to people ties special media campaigns to advance our historical experiences asian values common asian values and cultural affinities should be initiated fourthly as arts and drama are the best reflection of uh, a nation's philosophy and culture the entertainment industries of the two countries should forge strong linkages and promote our dramas movies and music as you all know recently pakistan movie pravaz e junoon made its uh, debut uh, had a screening in, in in china which was after 45 years that the pakistani movies were screened in china and it was very well received and there is lot of interest in forging a uh, partnership uh, for 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 more screenings of pakistani and chinese movies in, in each other countries and also for joint production of movies finally as you all know china and pakistan are celebrating uh, 70 years of establishment of diplomatic relations uh, next year so this year uh, would also next year also marks the centennial of the communist communist party of china so media houses of the two countries should organize special programs documentaries and seminars to celebrate this important milestone and renew our resolve to take our ties to to greater heights so the pakistan embassy in beijing and chinese embassy in islamabad uh, are both are ready to help you and cooperate with you in this regard honorable guests uh, friendship between pakistan and china is not merely the result of convergence of bilateral interests but it in fact determined by geography history and culture as prime minister of pakistan mr imran khan said that future of pakistan and china are is intertwined it's a relationship which has been sustained by successive governments and generations of people while our close ties and partnership is a factor of peace and stability is also a target of our detractors so therefore our media needs to play a crucial role to help nurture our historic ties educate our peoples promote the stories of our friendship and continue advancing new and innovative ideas for achieving our shared destiny this would be a great service to our friendship regional stability and most significantly for the prosperity of our peoples i wish the six media forum a great success i thank you all thank you thank you so much ambassador uh thank you for your warm remarks for actually really acknowledging the importance of the integral role that media plays uh during the covid-19 pandemic journalists were acknowledged as frontliners and i think all of us here would agree that even in the further implementation and enhancement of cpec journalists have throughout been frontliners and our forum is one more way to celebrate their role and to also assist their role uh with that i would like to welcome mr tian yu hong executive secretary of the all china journalists association to make a keynote speech distinguished guests and friends from chinese and pakistani media greetings it gives me great pleasure to attend the sixth cpec media forum to discuss china pakistan media cooperation in the post epidemic era this year due to the epidemic we can only gather online but the epidemic cannot stop the friendship between us the screen cannot sever our bonds china and pakistan are linked by mountain rivers and enjoy friendly people to people ties the two peoples have enjoyed solid friendship for generations our all weather strategic partnership has become a model of state to state exchanges and has been fully recognized by two peoples as an important project under the belt and road initiative CPEC is a symbol of our attachment. It is not only of good significance to our common yeah, development, but also serves as a good example for regional connectivity and a common prosperity. 
news exchange and cooperation is an important factor to promote the healthy development of bilateral relations and smooth implementation of the projects. Over the years, media of the two countries have conducted close cooperation and diversified exchanges. Under the BRI framework, All China Journalists Association has established close cooperative relations with several journalist organizations, including the Pakistan Federation Union of Journalists, All Pakistan Journalists Association, and All Pakistan Newspaper Society. In the face of COVID-19, the common enemy of the people of mankind, media of China and Pakistan help each other with a common mission through exchanges of concern, joint initiatives, mutual systems, and online exchanges. It has written a magnificent chapter of unity and cooperation in overcoming difficulties. In the post-epidemic era, the media of the two sides should enhance cooperation and mutual trust so as to build broader consensus in public opinions and a stronger support for common development. To this end, I would like to put forward some suggestions on behalf of the All China Journalists Association. First, fulfill the mission of cooperation and serve the overall interests of China-Pakistan friendship. News media of the two sides should focus on the BRI cooperation and tell more in-depth and vivid stories about our friendship and common development. As a national news organization, ACJA stands ready to support and encourage more new media to enhance political trust, economic and trade exchanges, cultural exchanges and media cooperation, mutual understanding and people-to-people -people bond between the two countries, promote good neighborhood and friendly relations, and inject vitality for joint BRI and CPEC construction. Second, deepen cooperation and mutual trust and consolidate friendly media relations. News media of the two countries should conduct more exchanges and cooperation, expand cooperation in content, channels, and marketing, and use more vivid and diversified news reports to, to consolidate our friendship. The CPEC Media Forum is a very good platform for exchanges and cooperation. I hope the news media of the two countries will have in-depth exchanges via the forum, build consensus with sincerity, and pull stronger synergy. I hope the media organizations of the two sides will further cooperation and constantly upgrade the level of our pragmatic collaboration. Third, strengthen mutual learning and promote high quality development of online media. At present, the rapid development of the internet, AI, big data, 5G networks, and other information technologies has triggered profound changes in the forms of, in the forms of communication and the pattern of public opinion. The media in both sides are facing the task of media transformation and integration. The sides should follow the trend of media integration and learn from each other's experience more deeply. ACJA is willing to promote cooperation between the media of the two countries in, in business research, training and, and research, and help media and the journalists better meet the needs of the development of new technologies. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in the post-epidemic era, Media exchanges and cooperation between China and Pakistan have become even more important. The Chinese People's Association of China is willing to work with friends from Pakistani press to promote bilateral news exchanges and deepen the friendship between the two peoples. I'd like to thank the Chinese Embassy in Pakistan, China Economic Net, and Pakistan China Institute for their outstanding contributions to the CPEC Media Forum. I wish the forum a complete success. Thank you.
the China Journalist Association has offered immense support to the cooperation between Chinese and Pakistani journalists and hence played a very important role in the mutual understanding that journalists on both sides experience. Uh, thank you for your warm remarks. Now it's time for us to warmly welcome Senator Mushahid Hussain Sayyid, Chairman, Senate Foreign Affairs Committee, and also Chairman of Pakistan China Institute. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Ni hao to all our Chinese friends uh, in China and in Pakistan, and a very good afternoon to my Pakistani colleagues and assalamu alaikum to them also. Uh, Excellency Sadiq Sanjurani, the Honorable Chairman of the Senate of Pakistan, the Honorable Ambassador of China to Pakistan, Nong Rong, the Honorable Ambassador of Pakistan to China, Moinul Haq. And I warmly welcome both these ambassadors because they have been uh, taking their positions during this COVID year. And in the very short period, uh, they have already activated and taken Pakistan-China relations to a new level. And I would like to especially also thank our Chinese distinguished friends, His Excellency Cheng Jingdong, who is the president and editor-in-chief of the China Economic Daily. Uh, and just now who just spoke, uh, Mr. Tian Yung Hong, who is the executive secretary of the All China Journalists Association, and also Mr. Nisi Yi, who's going to follow, and Madam Zhao Chiao, who's also going to be following uh, these speeches. And I would also like to mention the diverse and distinguished uh, gathering that we have from Pakistan also. Uh, it is, uh, we have uh, uh, the Minister for Railways, uh, who is handling the biggest project that is mentioned in the documentary, the mainline one and railways. Then we have uh, one of the leading experts in the government of Pakistan on uh, CPAC, His Excellency Jahan Zaheb Khan, Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, because he has been involved in the first phase of CPAC. And then we also have Mudassar Tipu, uh, who is the Director General of uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and who has served in the past and various diplomatic assignments inside China, in the embassy and in the consulate general. And I would also like to congratulate uh, the winners of the CPEC award who will be awarded later on today, the distinguished journalist from Pakistan. And my compliments to uh, Mustafa and uh, the team in also in Beijing of the China Economic Net, the Pakistan China Institute, and of course the embassy of China for their support and cooperation in this event. This is the sixth China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Media Forum, and we have had this success despite the COVID-19. I feel that uh, the speeches that have been made before me, i just like to briefly refer to those. Uh, Chairman Senate also mentioned that uh, the resilience of CPEC despite COVID-19. Uh, CPEC has been on track in this difficult year. Nobody has been laid off. And the second phase of CPEC has also begun. And he, uh, the Chairman Senate also mentioned two other things which are important. One, that the Senate of Pakistan has taken the lead in the passage of resolutions supporting China, expressing solidarity with China at the peak of the first phase of the uh, coronavirus uh, epidemic, pandemic. And that was in February 10th, 2020. Uh, we, uh, I sponsored the resolution, which is unanimously passed. Then the second resolution came on 14th of May 2020 also, which was unanimously passed. We expressed full support to China uh, and thank China for their support. And it was support from both sides also, moral and material. And we feel that this is extremely important. I would also like to mention some of the points that were made by His Excellency Cheng Jingdong, the President and Chief, uh, Editor-in-Chief of the China Economic Daily. He mentioned that in a complex international environment, the need for joint action and synergy between the media uh, of both China and Pakistan. And I think this is what the CPEC Media Forum is all about, how to exchange ideas, exchange views, and then collaborate together for the common purpose of uh, promoting Pakistan-China relationship. And in this regard, also, I would like to say that uh, uh, His Excellency Nong Rong mentioned uh, about the working group on international cooperation, 
which is also attended by our ambassador in uh, uh, Beijing, who is now in Urumqi, uh, Mr. Moinul Haq, that this working group on international cooperation has decided to focus on involving the media and think tanks of both countries in promoting the Belt and Road Initiative and the CPEC forward. And it's very positive that in the last meeting, which took place apparently two days ago in Urumqi, uh, the Working Group on International Cooperation has decided that there will be uh, a third party participation invited in CPEC. I think this is a, a great achievement. As we close 2020, it means that CPEC has grown beyond the relationship between Pakistan and China. And it is a success story. And as the chairman Senna said, it's a household word in, uh, in Pakistan. So in this context, uh, the CPEC Media Forum, which has been uh, holding for the last several years, we have had three very fundamental objectives when we started this initiative with our partners, the China Economic Net. Number one, to promote and strengthen this unique all-weather strategic partnership between Pakistan and China. So this has been a very important element in that. The second important aspect of the CPEC Media Forum has been that in the current context, the pillar of this all-weather strategic partnership between Pakistan and China is CPEC. And CPEC, as Ambassador Nongrong rightly said, is the pilot project of the Belt and Road Initiative launched by President Xi Jinping in September 2013 when he spoke in Almaty in Kazakhstan. And the Belt and Road Initiative, the BRI today, is the biggest developmental and diplomatic initiative of the 21st century involving different countries, continents, and cultures. And as uh, Ambassador Moinul Lux rightly said, that this has now gained universal legitimacy, the BRI, because it is spurring economic growth and also building upon uh, relationships uh, in the field of economy, energy, ports, pipelines, roads, railways. It's all about connectivity uh, in the region. And also we feel that uh, it's important, and this was also underlined by various speakers, that the CPEC Media Forum is the one institutional platform which provides for cooperation between the media leaders of Pakistan and China, as well as uh, think tanks, as well as opinion leaders, where we can also strategize and synergize to counter propaganda. Because this, unfortunately, uh, this year we have seen on COVID-19, there was a lot of, uh, first on COVID-19, for geopolitical reasons, there was a lot of negative propaganda uh, about China, about third world countries, about even Pakistan. And we know the sources of this negativism, the sources of this propaganda is the same because they are want to undercut BRI. They want to malign CPEC with fake news, with disinformation through cyber warfare techniques. So we are aware of that. And recently uh, in Pakistan also, we have seen that expose of those uh, kind of outlets, uh, not done by Pakistan, but done internationally by the European organization, Disinfo Lab, uh, based in Brussels. So we feel that this is extremely important. And when the attempt was made to stigmatize China in the early phases of the COVID-19, because China is a success story in handling the pandemic, under the leadership of the Communist Party of China led by President Xi Jinping and the support of the Chinese people, how the Wuhan lockdown of 76 days is a success story and how China helped not only its own people in overcoming this biggest challenge, which has no race, which has no religion, which has no ethnicity, which has no nationality, but it's a common scourge which requires efforts at globalization of 
common interests and cooperation. And that is why when President Xi Jinping declared at the World Health Assembly in May 2020, that uh, whenever the vaccine is developed, it will be disseminated for the greater public good, we will because Pakistan, like other countries which are hit by the COVID-19, would be beneficiary of this uh, vaccine. And we are already seeing the beneficial aspects of Pakistan-China cooperation during the COVID-19, where both sides help each other. Uh, Pakistan to China in the initial phases, and then China with Pakistan. So this initiative is a very positive one. We have developed institutional mechanisms uh, in here in the Pakistan China Institute, along with the partners in the China Economic Net. And we feel that uh, with new ambassadors in place, uh, both in Islamabad and Beijing, Ambassador Moinul Haq in Beijing, who is also a very experienced diplomat of the Pakistan Foreign Ministry, as well as Excellency Nong Rong, who I found to be very dynamic, very creative, and uh, full of new initiatives and ideas during my meeting with him. I feel that this relationship will be taken forward in that 2021. And as uh, was pointed out, that this 2021 is important for two reasons. The 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Pakistan and China, and the 100 years of the formation of the Communist Party of China in July uh, 2021. So we look forward to participating in these uh, celebrations because these are celebrations of concrete achievements. CPEC has achieved the first phase. It has moved to the second phase. It has given us 75,000 Pakistanis jobs. There are 28,000 Pakistani students studying in China. Uh, it has built, it has resolved our energy crisis. It has uh, built infrastructure connecting the Federation of Pakistan and its different provinces. And Gwada port, which is the centerpiece of CPEC, is today a port where uh, not just Afghan transit trade, which the Chairman Senate mentioned, but also trade with Central Asian landlocked republics of Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and, Tur and Uzbekistan will be uh, further strengthened. So we look forward with a lot of optimism and a, a positive approach to building this relationship together. And the media would be a force multiplier in building Pakistan-China relations. And the CPEC Media Forum is the platform that will take it forward with the help and cooperation of all of uh, our friends who are watching and all of our institutional partners uh, in Beijing and Islamabad. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the Pakistan-China Institute and on behalf of the parliament and on behalf of my own uh, Senate Foreign Affairs Committee, let me assure you that the future belongs to Pakistan and China and indeed Asia and the world in building a better tomorrow with no overlords and no underdogs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Mushahid, for also expressing the purpose uh, why CPEC Media Forum was established and making the participants today's participants understand the significance of this friendship. Let's hope that uh, with the 70 years of our friendship and also with the 100 years of the establishment of the CCC, we see even more progress um, under CPEC as we achieve phase three dynamically. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite our guest in studio. Let's welcome Mr. Ni Sidi, Deputy Director, Office of Editor-in-Chief of the Xinhua News Agency to make welcoming remarks. Distinguished guests from China and Pakistan, distinguished media colleagues, it's a great pleasure for me to join this forum today. And I'd like to thank His Excellency Nong Rong and uh, Mr. Zheng. I'd like to congratulate the successful held of this event. As China's national news agency who faces the whole world, Xinhua News Agency has been long valuing the reports about Pakistan and the construction of CPAC has always been deemed the focus. For us. In 2019, Xinhua News Agency collaboration with independent news Pakistan 
opened an inclusive line for Urdu news in Pakistan so that we can provide news from China and worldwide to the Pakistani media in Urdu, make the Pakistani people more accessible to China and our bilateral cooperation, thus boosting Pak-China relations. In October 2019, when Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan visited China, heads of Xinhua News Agency and Independent News Pakistan signed a cooperation agreement in Pakistan, which has been listed as an achievement of PM's visit by the two governments. At present, over 40 pieces of news are published through this special line every day, which includes articles, pictures, videos, and multimedia contents. Mr. Shahid, editor-in-chief of the Pakistani press, um, commented that Xinhua News Agency is producing reports that are balanced, objective, and unbiased. These natures are rare in Pakistan media, so it has been a crucial source of China's global news for Pakistan. Based on this special line, Xinhua News Agency registered our account in Facebook Twitter and YouTube. Now, over 450 million people followed us on Facebook, and the figure is still on the rise. During the pandemic, our Pakistani channel keeps broadcasting the global trend in this term, the R&D of vaccines and China's progress in COVID-19 containment in the effort to cater to the needs of Pakistani media. The special line not only introduced China's growth in society, economy, and technology, but also focuses on how Pakistani people live in China. Our reports cover the story of a youth called Abdul Ghaffar Shah, a Pakistani youth. His families are closely related with China. His cousin just graduated from China and returned to Pakistan as a professor. His brother is pursuing a degree in Peking University. In 2014, after college, he was offered China's governmental scholarship, and he came to China's Northwest ANF University for a doctoral degree in plant nutrition from Karachi, Pakistan. Over the past five years, as his footprints left in multiple experimental stations in China's Low Earth Plateau, his plunge into China's rural area gave him first-hand experience about the nation's development. He also devoted to poverty alleviation in remote areas. In Shanxi province, he solved the problem for farmers in mountainous areas. He taught in a primary school as a volunteer, opening a window for the local children to learn about Pakistan. He befriended local farmers and celebrated the spring festival with them by making dumplings and using chopsticks. We followed up on his story and saw the news evoke strong responses in our special line and social media platform. As commented by a Pakistani person, it is place when we cooperation and mutual learning, and it's another step towards building a community shared by all. There are many stories alike. We believe they will enable a closer interaction and cooperation between the people of China and Pakistan. Since 1964, Xinhua News Agency has been exchanging news with the Associated Press of Pakistan contribution agreements have been signed with over 30 mainstream media in Pakistan and think tanks. Pakistani media have given their generous support to our special line. Here, on behalf of Xinhua News Agency, I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, this year is destined to be a watershed for people's history. The COVID-19 is catalyzing momentous changes and seeing the history. While driven by the pandemic and the sluggish economy, inward-looking trends, unilateralism, and protectionisms are on the rise in some countries. Meanwhile, the human community is more desirous about health, safe, and peaceful development, and embracing a deeper perception of win-win cooperation 
and shared destiny. Facing the hard times globally, China and Pakistan join hands in fighting the pandemic with a shared commitment in further opening up and mutually beneficial cooperation. We just reported the official delivery of the largest transportation infrastructure project and CPAC to Pakistan, the so-called Mountain Motorway. It crystallized how CPAC construction was sparking the trend despite COVID-19. We are true friends who share will and woe and good brothers who share each other's joys and sorrows. So our friendship is unbreakable. Pack China cooperation featured by CPAC will be ever more vibrant. Next year will mark the 17th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our two nations. Xinhua News Agency will continue practicing based on the consensus reached by our heads of state and commonly promote more stories about Pak China friendship and CPAC so that more Pakistani people will know about China. We will continue to contribute to the all weather strategic cooperative partnership and serve a closer China Pakistan community of shared future. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Nisi. Xinhua uh, News Agency's latest um, contribution in the Urdu language is extremely significant for the deepening of cooperation and understanding in Pakistan of CPEC. Thank you. Now, I would like to welcome. Uh, Mr. Mohammad Jahan Zeb Khan, Deputy Chairman, Planning Commission, to make his remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Beijing and Islamabad. Excellency Chairman Senate, uh, Excellency Ambassador Nong Rong, Excellency Ambassador Muin Haq, Excellency Senator Mushad Hussain, Chair, Foreign Affairs Committee. Excellency Cheng, Cheng Dong, President, China Economic Daily. And our dear friend Mustafa Haider, who has wonderfully organized this event. I'd like to begin by thanking all of you for inviting me to this excellent forum. Also like to mention the timeliness, the important uh, period that this forum indicates, as was mentioned, uh, the completion of the phase one and the initiation of phase two of CPAC. Senator Mushad mentioned uh, my association with this grand project. I've been very privileged to be part of it since the very inception and have a good institutional memory and also an overview of how it has evolved. In my 35 years of experience in the public sector, I've not seen another endeavor of this magnitude, which is so wide ranging and has so multi-layered with so many sectors and players working together for objectives which are common good and which are meant to enhance the quality of life for ordinary people. So I'd like to congratulate everybody who has been part of this huge endeavor. I'd like to appreciate the Chinese side for their very, very strong commitment and effort to make CPAC successful, both for Pakistan and China. I think the speakers have already mentioned the important landmarks and achievements but it is important to recall some of the work which has been done and the next steps, the work agenda that we have before us. I'd like to just share a presentation just to refresh our memories and move very quickly through the work which has been done and then suggest some of the things which are now of importance for us in what we are calling this next phase of CPAC. So I hope you can uh, see this presentation, which I'm, I'm just sharing with the audience.
Is it? Uh, yes. Okay. Slide show. Mm -hmm. So the uh, first phase, as was described by many of our colleagues here, was largely about uh, infrastructure development. And this infrastructure development led to the mitigation of the energy crisis, which was a huge uh, challenge for Pakistan. It also led to development of connectivity, new highways, new connectivity in terms of designs of the pipelines, the ML1, all the preparatory work on this huge uh, undertaking that we are uh, moving ahead with. And this phase has laid, I would say, the foundation and the infrastructure for moving forward to the next uh, phase. I think this is an important slide which is now on display because it puts into perspective the, the various uh, phases that had been described in the long-term plan. And this long-term plan is from 2015 to 2030. It was signed in Islamabad in 2017. As you would notice, it clearly mentions the early harvest projects and the short-term projects. And it is interesting that uh, the period is to complete in 2020. And then from 2020 to 2025, it talks about the period of expansion and development. Primarily, where we have processing and manufacturing industries to be developed significant improvement in the lives of the people, so generating new jobs, improving their quality of life, balanced regional economic uh, development, and all the goals of Vision 2025 to be achieved. <clears throat> the third phase, which is also going to be important, would be the period of maturity which would put into place sustainable mechanisms for uh, developing this cooperation into a long lasting partnership. So we see that we have achieved quite a bit and without going into the details of these projects, uh, I'd just like to remind of ourselves of what has already been achieved. A lot of work has been done, some is ongoing, and it's also good to see some of these projects which were mentioned earlier on in the form of a pictorial pictures. We just have a first-hand glimpse of what has been achieved. I'll just flip through some of these slides which are interesting. And some of this work is already benefiting the people of Pakistan. So moving forward, these are some of the infrastructure projects which have been also completed. These are projects which were recently commissioned, for instance, the Orange Metro Line project in Lahore, the East Bay Express is near completion, New Gawada International Airport, the work has started, and some of these very important roads and arteries are also uh, at various stages of construction. Mainline one project is, is, as was mentioned also, is of extreme importance. It is now ready to move ahead, We're working very closely with the Chinese side to finalize the loan application. The project preparatory work in Pakistan has been achieved. And now we are moving ahead to achieve the financial close leading to the uh, bidding and award of contract. And this would really be a game changer within the game changer. <clears throat> you can also see some of the other important projects on this uh, slide. Gawadar is the centerpiece and 
after some preparatory work, we have seen concrete things happening there. As I mentioned, the international airport, and thank you very much uh, to the Chinese side. This is a huge gift to the people of Pakistan. Uh, it's been funded through a grant, and now work is in full swing there. The incentive package for Gwadar was also organized, and now it is becoming ready to receive investments. Of course, the coal power plant, which is being also built up there, would provide the much needed energy for a number of industries which are likely to be installed in Gawadar. <laughs> These are the other projects for Gawadar, which I thought uh, would remind of us, uh, ourselves of the work being done. Uh, now, coming to the second phase, and I think I tried to mention that this is, we are working as per the long-term plan. So this is not just that we are moving from one phase to another, it was very well structured. And then in this phase, the emphasis is on economic activities, the industrial cooperation, agriculture modernization, huge work to be done here. China has shown some great strides in agriculture and leading to social economic development, improving our social indicators, also based on science and technology. Now, this is going to be the bedrock, the foundation for this very important phase, uh, which is the phase or period of expansion and development. Uh, some of the energy and transportation projects which were uh, initiated would continue and they would go on for completion. Petroleum sector would also get a renewed interest as was mentioned, the pipelines and the storage capacity for gas, petroleum. On industrial cooperation, our key effort would be to enhance exports from Pakistan. This is extremely important, ladies and gentlemen, because we are suffering from a chronic balance of payment crisis. The current account remains in deficit. And to come out of that quagmire, uh, we must enhance exports. And Pakistan offers huge opportunities for that. With Chinese investment, we have GSP plus in the European Union. We have access to a lot of markets. The Chinese side has technology, capital, and skills. And goods manufactured in Pakistan can be exported to the global market as well as to China. Transfer of technology and generating environment, new employment would be key to this phase. Of course, there was talk about the special economic zones. Uh, three are moving forward very actively, at least four, Rashakai, Alama Iqbal, Industrial City, Dhabiji and Bostan, they're all moving forward. And in parallel, the Chinese side has done some very, very useful diagnostic studies to understand the challenges, the impediments in developing these sectors. And that preparatory work will help us in sharply focusing on what needs to be done in this phase. Uh, we have some challenges and I think it's good to remind ourselves of those important aspects. And fundamentally, this is work to be done on our side in Pakistan. We have to improve the investment climate uh, we have to be fast track in processing approvals and various formalities, in particular to invite Chinese private sector. I must mention this, that in the first phase, it was a huge effort of the Chinese government that they mobilized the public sector in China, which came in a big way. But now we also have to work with the private sector. And the private sector will require the kind of facilitation, the kind of partnerships, which allow them to move quickly. And that is a challenge that we are trying to address on our side. We have, there's more work to be done. We also have to look at how to prepare our domestic firms to absorb the Chinese technology, to work with the Chinese companies, which are much larger in size and have developed management practices. So. There could be some challenges in arranging partnerships and we have to look at 
how to overcome those challenges, how to prepare the Pakistan's private sector also to work with the Chinese uh, private sector and firms. <laughs> Agricultural engagement is a, is a huge area. Uh, I should say that a lot of preparatory work has been going on in this, but we would now like to move forward to actual concrete action. This is an area where Pakistan has many advantages and China has done some remarkable work in agriculture development. So I would like to focus your attention towards the side. We in the Planning Commission would also focus intensely on agriculture. As I said, this is an area which uh, perhaps has not moved as far as we should have moved on this. And again, the, uh, the preparation has to be on our side, on the Pakistani side, so that China can, can help us on speed. On locust control, I should mention China, it's great support to us, their help always forthcoming to, to let us uh, develop the capacity, the technology to deal with uh, these kind of issues. Uh, these are some of the areas in which we'll be working on agriculture development. Huh. And uh, the, this is work in progress as we're moving forward. I'd mentioned science and technology as, as the foundation and bedrock for the next uh, phase and this is very, very important. There's a new joint working group on science and technology, which is also preparing an agenda on how to move forward, the Young Scientists Exchange Program, establishment of science and technology parks and laboratories, and joint ventures on in manufacturing, these would all be important components as we move forward. The optical fiber cable project, phase one successfully completed. Phase two, we have approved the project and it will now be extended from Islamabad to Karachi. It will provide us a digital highway also to connect uh, CPAC and China and Pakistan more uh, intensely. Tourism is another area where a lot of work is going on, but more work needs to be done. Because this is how people will be able to travel and know each other better. Of course, we are handicapped right now because of COVID, but this is an area of great excitement and potential so that we learn from the Chinese people, Pakistani people can travel to China for tourism purposes. And likewise, the Chinese can come and enjoy the tourist sports and recreational facilities of Pakistan. The social economic development project, this is uh, almost about a billion dollar of uh, grant assistance that the Chinese side is providing us and like to once again, we're grateful for everything that is being done, but in particular, because these are the projects which directly help people from the lower socioeconomic background and trying to help the common people to improve their quality of life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll conclude by saying that this period is of extreme importance. We have done a lot of work, projects, etc. But this is not only projects and not only programs, but it would be partnership which would be abiding and would continue. And for that, it is very, very important that we enhance our people-to-people -people exchange, develop more common understanding and outlook. Even during this COVID period, seminars, webinars like these, we must continue to exchange because this would help diffusion of what has happened and also create better understanding. The People of Pakistan and the Prime Minister has also said this, greatly admire the strides that China has taken to lift people out of poverty and provide a new development model to the world, which is based on pragmatism, on reality, on achieving results. And we are keen to share these cultural experiences and strengths and see how we can build our institutions and systems to benefit from this. There has to be deeper engagement between media, academia, and researchers, other than public sector and private sector 
business players. We will have to have more breadth of relationship already is happening, but needs to be enhanced and achieve the goal of creating more livelihoods and balanced regional development in Pakistan, something which is the key cornerstone of phase two. <laughs> While I conclude, I would like to once again acknowledge the great work done by our Chinese friends to make this successful. I'd like to also recall the efforts of many of our colleagues and partners here in Pakistan who have been part of this project of great significance. I'd like to thank uh, the China Pakistan Institute and also the China Net for being the host of this seminar and I'd like to compliment Mustafa and the Sayyid for his great energy and enthusiasm and continuing to be a champion of China-Pakistan partnership and relationship. Senator Mushad Hussain has been a great moving spirit in this direction. I'd like to acknowledge his great work. And thank you very much, Chairman Senate, uh, Mr. Sadiq Sanjirani, who not only has been instrumental in getting very valuable support in the Senate for this project, but also greatly values the work being done. Thank you for allowing me to participate in this seminar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jahan Zeb, for your participation and also your extremely great insight on the CPEC. Truly, we have made various achievements and there's much more to look forward to, much more to improve. And I think your words can give further direction to the many journalists who also play an important part in identifying avenues of further cooperation. Thank you. With that, I would like to welcome Ms. Zhao Chiao, Director, Department of Urdu, CMG, Asian African Languages Programming Center, to make her remarks. Chairman Senate of Pakistan, Mohammed Sadiq Sanjani, Chairman of the Pakistan China Institute, Mushahi Hussain Said, Her Excellency Norum, Her Excellency Haq, dear colleagues, friends, greetings. It is my pleasure to attend the sixth China Pakistan Economic Corridor Media Forum. First, I'd like to thank our Chinese Embassy in Pakistan. China Economic and Pakistan China Institute. They allow us to gather here despite the spreading coronavirus so that we could explore ways to deepen cooperation and jointly contribute to the high quality development of CPEC. With the advancement of the CPEC, we are witnessing more close trade and economic cooperation and the people to people exchanges providing huge spaces for our medias. I work in the Department of Urdu, CMG, Asian and African Language Center, CCTV. I'm uh, working to promote China-Pakistan friendship. Over the years, I uh, have been witnessing the importance and necessity for media cooperation, and I'm delighted to see the, our fruits of the cooperation. Recently, our department has conducted close cooperation with the Pakistani media and uh, acted out a series of activities and programs. For instance, we have um, held the Dosti FM 98 with Pakistan PBC, which broadcasted on October 17th, 2012. And in April 2015, President Xi Jinping inaugurated uh, one of our program studio for China-Pakistan friendship. Over the past eight years, we have uh, broadcasted multiple CPAC programs and uh, set up featured broadcasts conveying credible information. This year, in face of the abrupt coronavirus and in collaboration with Pakistan media, we've been fighting against the challenge together presenting an objective and true China to Pakistan China. During the epidemic, some people disseminated misinformation about 
and the lives of Pakistani students in China, our department and our Islamabad program studio interviewed some uh, Pakistani students in China, in Wuhan and China, and invite them to introduce their daily lives. They expressed their understanding towards the government's decision and uh, approved the concern of the their school and the Pakistani embassy in China. The interview was broadcast on Facebook platforms and the corporate for media in Pakistan, which is formally received. And our journalists have communicated frequently with uh, Neo News and Sama um, studio in Pakistan, expressing the measures uh, of Chinese government against the coronavirus and clarify the rumors regarding the Pakistani students' lives in China. The two medias of our size are responsible for the storytelling of the CPEC friendship and the CPEC. In the post-epidemic era, the two sides should cooperate more and objective, part, impartial, and true uh, stories released to promote the CPAC construction and disseminate the benefits that it delivered to Pakistani and Chinese people. Only in this way can we enhance our political trust and uh, allow our people to know about our traditional economic trade and cooperation. Secondly, we should expand our dissemination forums and forms and promote promote people to people exchanges. We should uh, we should resort to various forms of cooperation and expand our channels. We can invite guests to our uh, programs and share our views so that we can share our differences in history, nature, humanities, and people's lives so that we can learn about, understand, and be familiarized with each other, laying a sound foundation for the high quality development of CPEC. Third, we should enhance cooperation in media talent to promote CPEC cooperation. We should enhance talent communication and training in an all round way so that they could be active promoters and safeguarders of CPEC construction and practitioners of CPEC friendship. Fourth, we should enhance communication in media technologies and empower our media cooperation. The CCTV has released the 4K ultra high definition channel and the first national 5G news media platform. Currently, we are advancing the strategy of 5G plus 4K or 8K plus AI, striving to provide better audiovisual experience for audiences around, around the globe. We hope the rapid development of technology can empower our media cooperation. Over the years, our cooperation and exchanges in media have played an important role in the mutual understanding between the two sides. In 2021, we will embrace the 70th anniversary of our friendship. Let us take on the opportunity to cooperation and promote the high quality development of the CPAC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chao. Uh, your contributions personally to the promotion of Pakistani culture, especially through the Urdu language, predate the Belt and Road Initiative and CPEC. So we are very grateful to you for that and your time today and uh, your warm remarks. Thank you once again. Uh, so now we will welcome Senator Azam Khan Sawati, Federal Minister for Railways, to make his remarks. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim From the very outset, let me extend my gratitude to CPEC media team who has organized this particular program. 
as far as main line one project this we call in pakistan is early harvesting a program or a project that will enhance the capability and effectiveness of our human resource in pakistan it will create enormous job the project total is going to be costing about 6.8 billion dollar but at the same time the biggest beauty of it that it will go from a place where 80 percent of our industry is located 78 percent population is going to be benefited this project will not only enhance our ability to move farm to market product but at the same time it is our passenger is going to be moving pretty fast our goods are going to go from one distance to another in a shortest little time our defense products and also the defense forces are going to move it from one place to another so the multiple use of this ml1 this flagship program that the government of china has given us the opportunity which is the biggest opportunity in my lifetime this opportunity will take pakistan to a new world we will enter into a railway transport a cargo transport a passenger transport in 24, 21st century and i am so proud and happy that i am the minister of pakistan railway and i thank my friend a great country who has relationship with us not only on the commercial basis but relationship is integrated it reflects our love and affection of the people of china and i salute president xi for giving us this enormous opportunity with this with the completion of ml1 Pakistan will enjoy so much benefit. Industries around that will be developed. Our raw material will come very fast. Our product is going to reach from one destination to another. And on the top of that, the bond and the relationship that we have with our great brother China is going to be multiple. It is a kind of story that we are going to be taking to the rest of the world that yes, this is a friendship. This is a common goal that both countries are going to be striving and every inch of a second, brick to brick, block to block, I am so glad that as Minister of Railway, I will be watching and accomplishing ML1 and also the friendship of a great country, of a great brotherly country, a historical relationship that we have are going to be strengthened, enhanced to unlimited sky. Yes, once again, I thank the people of China, the government of China for providing that opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator, for your words today. And indeed, transport infrastructure with that, the resulting mobility of people and goods were a game changer for China in the 40 years of reform and opening up. And that is one of the visions for CPEC as well. So we look forward to tremendous achievements 
under the railways during these years, the years to come. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Mudassar Tipu, who is Director General China at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Pakistan, to make his remarks. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. I have to thank Chairman Senate for being on this seminar. Uh, uh, the, the Railways Minister, Senator Mushahid Hussain, and I have to thank PCI and China Comic Net for holding you know, this uh, webinar at a very important time. And I must also say here that China Comic Net is making a very good contribution in projecting the highlights of economic development and what CPEC is doing and how you know Pakistan is facilitating CPEC become the high quality demonstration project of BRI. And along with uh, China Economic Net, I think I must also say here that Gavadar Port, uh, the, the Gavadar Pro uh, website is also playing a very positive role in highlighting all of the achievements and how Pakistan-China relationship is moving forward and particularly how much economic opportunities both countries do have. And I think in today's world, shaping narrative is going to be critical because there is so much dystopian news, false news going around. And the narratives are being embedded in the minds which have no basis in reality. And in, in social media and in the public media, when span of news cycle is just a couple of seconds, how do we show that people do get right information? And I think in this case, uh, China and Pakistan need to do a lot of work. They are already doing a lot of work. Uh, the, uh, 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 for example, CPEC, if we read CPEC, there is so much false news coming on CPEC. Uh, but on the other hand, if we look at the contributions of CPEC, these are, they, those are really phenomenal foreign secretary, uh, foreign minister of leadership at the highest level has again and again reiterated that CPEC is a transformational project. It is a project on which there is complete national consensus. And in past six, seven years, already uh, Mr. Jahan has spoken eloquently how much contribution CPEC has made in the infrastructure development and of course, in terms of building deeper relation between China and Pakistan, a couple of years ago, we had just a, a, a few flights between Pakistan and China. But now before COVID-19, we had a number of flights operating between both countries. We have 28,000 Pakistani students studying in China. And you know, uh, the, 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 the flow of people between both countries was rapidly increasing in the past several years. So these are, these are uh, those things which are truly remarkable. In the first phase, of course, we had built some massive infrastructure projects on energy and on power and in optical fiber. And within a short span of time, building those infrastructures was not easy. Uh, the discussions had to take place between the two governments, which were done through very extensive deliberations through the mechanism of JCC, and JWG, and different provinces were involved, different regulatory structures were involved in negotiating the projects. And if you look at the size of those projects, I think that Pakistan has done an excellent job in completing those projects. Of course, Pakistan is a developing economy. China is uh, nearly 40 to $15 trillion economy. The skill set of China is huge. The policy-making process of China is something which really needs to be emulated. And in past 30 years, China had developed an amazing expertise in building large scale infrastructure projects. If you go across China, this is absolutely unbelievable from Three Gorges Dam to you know, the bridge between Shenzhen and Hong Kong, the, the railway network inside China. This is the largest network in, in the world. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the, uh, the mitigation of poverty and Prime Minister Imran Khan has repeatedly underscored that for Pakistan, this is very important to learn from China the experience of economic development. Bringing 700 million people out of poverty in three decades is not less than a miracle. Uh, in COVID-19, 
Pakistan and China have very closely cooperated. Uh, President uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Arif Ali went to China in March this year. It was a solidarity visit. Uh, we, uh, the delegation went there when China was in the midst of dealing with COVID-19. Uh, China, of course, has supported Pakistan a great deal. Its military experts came to Pakistan. Its team of experts from Xinjiang came here, stayed here for more than three weeks, visited all the provinces, went to main facilities. Of course, the medical equipment that China provided. So on the people-to-people -people relationship, uh, one aspect of the beauty of this relationship is how people came so close together, how the political systems of both countries were mobilized. And these were, in fact, monumental achievements. There is a great deal of appreciation inside Pakistan and across the world that uh, containing uh, COVID-19 in a country of 1.4 million people, again, this is something which is nothing short of a miracle. And with with uh, and of the, the Communist Party of China truly deserves credit for uh, leading China out of this hugely huge scourge, which has undermined the global economy, has led us to deglobalization, uh, uh, creating fissures across the world. But China remains socially very stable, and it is the only country. Uh, out of G20, you know, which has resumed its positive economic growth. And during the times of COVID-19, China's leadership has unveiled uh, the dual circulation strategy, which means that, you know, the, the, vicious, the, the vicious cycle of economic, uh, the virtuous cycle rather, the virtuous cycle of economic development can move both ways. China, uh, you know, can support the other countries to develop their economies through better trading arrangements and then other countries are willing to invest in China and China is willing to invest in other countries. So on dual strategy, we need to uh, do a lot of work. Uh, on media, uh, in past few years, uh, media relationship, cultural relationship, people to people relationship is getting stronger, but I think there is a huge room for development. And this is my personal view, and this view I will not articulate as, uh, as, as somebody serving in the government of Pakistan. Uh, the narrative building is critical. How do we build narrative? How do we put the news and the achievements and the social and economic developments in the right perspective? How do we desensationalize the news? I think that's going to be critical. Uh, news for me is something very sacrosanct. How do we present it? that's going to be really critical because once the news is flashed, this is going to affect billions of people. It is going to affect the policymakers, the monumental decisions are taken through the news. So media has to be very judicious, very positive. And I think uh, it has to assume the responsibility of going up to what it has articulated. Uh, Pakistani media is, you're all aware, it's a, uh, it's a very free media. Uh, Chinese, and uh, when we look at the Chinese media, we see that you know, there's a great deal of responsibility demonstrated. There's some uh, technical problem. Uh, but thank you so much, Mr. Mudassir Tepu. I think um, one, of the, one of the facts we can acknowledge today together is that we have never been better postured as Pakistan to learn from the Chinese miracle. And I'm very glad that Mr. Mudassir Tepu highlighted the various achievements and the enhancement in the people to people dimension, how that has improved CPEC cooperation and overall improved the situation between both countries. So thank you for pointing that out and also about the sense of responsibility that media on both sides uh, should fulfill. I think this is what the CPEC Media Forum also lives up to. So with that, we close the second part of today's event. Thank you to all of our guests for your enlightening speeches. We will now come to the awarding ceremony of the third CPEC Communication Award.
Due to the epidemic, unfortunately, the prize winners from both Chinese and Pakistani uh, outlets have not been able to attend this event in person. So we will be presenting the photos of the winners on the screen to, exp to express our immense gratitude to them for their contribution to CPEC and China-Pakistan friendship in the extraordinary times that we have experienced. So thank you. The winners of the third CPEC Communication Award are Mohammad Askar, correspondent of Associated Press of Pakistan in Beijing. Naveed Hussain, editor-in-chief of the Express Tribune. Shafkat Ali, special correspondent of the nation. Liu Chang, journalist of China Media Group, Pakistan Bureau. Tariq Sumer, editor of INP. Amir Ghori, editor of the news. Sultan Hali, columnist, writer, and also author of a book on China. Thank you all of you for your immense contributions. And now I would like to invite Mr. Amir Ghori, editor of the news to deliver a speech on behalf of the prize winners of the third CPEC award. Welcome. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, the only um, trouble is that, uh, you know, I was not told that I actually have to speak on behalf of the winners, but uh, if I can, you know, uh, thank you very much. Uh, in a few, uh, you know, notes which I have uh, jotted down, uh, most of it actually has been said, but uh, let me just kind of start by, you know, saying that Excellency respected government officials, delegates and media colleagues, you know, good afternoon now, because we started in the morning, but this is a good afternoon on both sides. And let me start by saying that it's a unique honor and privilege to speak uh, at the sixth CPAC media forum jointly organized by Pakistan China Institute and China Economic Net in collaboration with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China uh, in Pakistan. So first thing first, uh, thank you, uh, PCI, Pakistan China Institute. Thank you, China Economic Net. And thank you to the Chinese Embassy in Islamabad for making today's event a reality in the tricky times of COVID. Uh, you know, a few thoughts which I actually wanted to say that, you know, looking at one's country from outside is an interesting idea. Uh, the big picture perspective gives you a chance to see how political economic, social, and societal changes are impacting your country and its people. And it's also provide a chance to see how and if your country is connected with its neighbors, within its region, and the world at large uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, and the thing why I say it, I was based in London when I first started hearing or reading about CPAC in early uh, 2014, 2014, 15. And I'm sure uh, you're all aware of the promise of the project when it was initially laid out originally estimated at around 47 billion dollars to upgrade pakistan's transport and uh, infrastructure build energy projects create special economic zones and then the worth you know was re-estimated at something like 20, uh, 62 billion by 2020. you know for any uh, uh, student of uh, politics and history uh, the significance of these numbers and what they can do for a developing country like pakistan was staggering uh, you know, articles in the Western media started multiplying. Uh, important European think tanks started discussing the importance of CPAC, uh, especially when seen in tandem with President Xi's project of the century, uh, what he called President of the Century, the Belt and Road Initiative. And considering that since uh, 2013, 136 countries and 30 global organizations have signed BRI uh, cooperation documents, received some over $90 billion uh, in Chinese FDI in exchange, $6 trillion in trade with China. These figures were you know, meant to raise questions too, uh, too many questions for those sitting in important Western capitals. I remember President Xi's uh, arriving in London on his first state visit to the United Kingdom uh, in October 2015. And the pomp and show of that visit was extraordinary. Both countries signed agreements worth 40 billion pounds. And the promise and the prospects of large Chinese investments in Europe raised many uh, an eyebrow. Uh, questions were flying about regarding the intent and speed of China's expanding economic influence. And uh, since economy uh, has always been the bedrock of international politics, uh, debates did take place if you know, such influence needed countering. Uh, after living in Europe for all, uh, you know, over 25, 26 years, I can understand you know, the value and worth of the connectivity, uh, multilateral trade, uh, open borders, interconnected markets, uh, countries that have fought uh, world wars, uh, are not only now trading partners uh, in Europe, but uh, they have created, uh, you know, one super state. Uh, we, we know that Britain has just decided to get out of it. Uh, we in Pakistan have long advocated the importance of 
our geography uh, and CPAC, we firmly believe would connect regions uh, through Pakistan. Uh, and this area would also you know, become a hub of uh, economic activity. Various factors, however, you know, impede our media's efforts to showcase CPAC uh, as a once in a lifetime project that uh, would firmly underpin our country's political and economic security. Uh, for that, we need transparency. Uh, to impress our audiences that CPAC is a force for good, we need information flow as to why progress is not what we were promised, you know, the speed of progress. Uh, we need fact-based information about the challenges. My earlier colleagues have spoken about, you know, the, the uh, you know, need and the importance of truth and fact-based news. But if it's not coming openly to us, you know, it becomes pretty tedious uh, process to, uh, you know, give it uh, out to our audiences. Uh, and we need to be very open that, you know, how this project is moving ahead, uh, both from the Chinese and the Pakistani side. We need credible information why timelines uh, were not met. Uh, and if uh, they were met, you know, we need to be told. People in various parts of the country that would see CPAC projects built or passing through the areas need to be constantly updated that there would be partners in uh, prosperity and not just silent spectators. And let me say that, you know, Pakistan China Institute has been doing a valuable job in informing Pakistani journalists about CPAC and progress on uh, projects there. I hope their work is continued and bolstered and uh, here a special thank to uh, Mustafa uh, uh, you know, Haider Sayed. Um, he, he, he has been a constant you know, force uh, telling us that you know, we need to do more. Uh, media ties between China and Pakistan need to be upgraded. Uh, you know, uh, it is there, but uh, very little. Both countries uh, can work on innovative ideas to engage audiences through television and film and social media and newspapers. You know, the language remains a, a barrier still. And I, I think, you know, more need to be done uh, if we are watching each other. Recently, we have seen, uh, you know, uh, uh, examples where television dramas from, you know, one particular country have created uh, a lot of uh, interest in Pakistan. Why not, you know, receive similar, you know, stuff from China and uh, you know show them what we are. Uh, another important, you know, last point I each wanted to make that the presence of the Chinese nationals, uh, you know, uh, Chinese businesses and Chinese companies have grown in Pakistan, and their presence is a welcome happening in a country that has been uh, has seen depleting numbers of uh, you know foreigners since uh, 1979. I, I remember growing up uh, in you know late 70s and early 80s. Chinese we never thought were foreigners. We always thought that they were brothers. And without sounding excessively critical, I'm sure that, you know, the present perceived slowdown uh, in CPEC activity would pick up pace once COVID-19 is effectively under control. So uh, once again, you know, thank you very much on, on behalf of all of my colleagues. I, I hope if they wanted to say these things or if they actually wanted to say extra, uh, you know, they can basically write to PCI. Uh, thank you very much and long live Pakistan-China friendship. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Amir Ghori. Uh, indeed, long live China-Pakistan friendship and also with journalists like yourself and the recipients of today's award, we can hope that uh, media can continue to play a very important role in CPEC and to enhance the cooperation. Uh, with this, we will actually invite question and answers. So let's invite some of our journalists, some of our participants to ask questions, to raise questions. Uh, with that, I'll wait for um, our staff to select one of the people who wants to ask a question. We need a moment. Here, okay, we have with us Mr. Yasser Habib Khan. Yes, Mr. Yasser, please ask your question and also briefly do introduce yourself as well. Uh, I'm Yasser Habib Khan and uh, I'm working as a special correspondent for China Economic Net. And uh, my question uh, is to uh, Santam Shah Hussain. So I, in fact, I want to ask that uh, in terms of, you know, if we see the market, new business and, you know, and different things, they are getting uh, multi-layered, multi-dimensional, and uh, wide-ranging. So they are different things. So same is case with the CPAC. So here we see that with the induction of, uh, you know, uh, the new things like IT, ICT, 
you know, digitalization and agro-based technology, science and technology. And uh, there are a number of subjects we are going, uh, still we are covering and we are going to cover. So my question is, uh, under this uh, phenomenal, uh, you know, the developments we are uh, watching and witnessing, uh, does the, you know, the, a journalist need a proper training as we see that uh, there are a number of uh, exchanges happening in between Pakistan and China. So what about a, the journalist trainings? Because as the, we, we know that the CPEC is, uh, if we look at different projects, uh, there are a number of intricacies, they are complex and uh, there are different things which need to be covered with the uh, true perspectives. So my question is that uh, uh, as a journalist, that uh, the journalist uh, needs a such proper trainings. So what do you think uh, in, on, on this line? For well, Senator Mushahid Hussain, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yasser Habib. And of course, uh, your own contribution to uh, CPEC has been outstanding. You have been writing regularly. You have been, and it's been a very informed perspective. And uh, as uh, our friend, uh, Mr. Amal Ghori pointed out that this has to be uh, transparent, the information flow, and it has to be fact-based. And that is what you have been doing. I think there are two aspects to that. Number one is that the context of CPAC. And I think there is where the education is extremely important that CPAC is not seen in isolation as just a project between two countries or two neighbors who are very friendly and who are very supportive of each other for the last uh, 50, 60 years. There is a world around us is being transformed. And let me give you an example. Yesterday, you read in the news that the British think tank, the Center for Ec Economy and Business Research has said that by 2028, China will overtake the United States as the world's largest economy. And they said, one of the reasons for that is China's better handling of the pandemic as compared to most countries in the West. By West, they mean the US and European countries. And they also give figures, which I'd like to cite. That for the next five years, China is likely to grow at 5.7% growth per annum, as opposed to 1.9% growth per annum for the United States. And these are figures from London, from a Western think tank that has analyzed the economy. So I think that uh, your point is well taken. And there are two aspects to that. One is the context, as I mentioned, other is the specific projects. Mr. Jhanze made a very important point. He said in his 35 years as a public servant, and he's one of the most senior civil servants of Pakistan, and probably one of the most competent and most distinguished also, who knows CPAC like the palm of his hand. He said in his 35 years of service, he has never seen something on this scale like CPEC in the history of Pakistan. So if for a person like him, you can see that the scale is so huge for the average person or even for a journalist who is not a specialist, I think this is a huge task. And I would suggest to the China Economic Net that perhaps together the China Economic Net and the Pakistan China Institute can prepare an initiative for 2021 for a joint training program for journalists focusing on CPEC on BRI and on collective economic development. So we train journalists from both countries in short training workshops where experts can come in. People, not just people who spoke today, but people from different walks of life who know about the subject. And I think that can be very useful. So thank you for your suggestion, uh, Mr. Yasser Habib, and I wish you good luck. And I also want to wish uh, the winners of this year uh, a lot of success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mujahid. And really, thank you, Yasser, for that question. Let's hope this joint training program in the future can also become a template for other countries who are looking for better ways uh, to promote the Belt and Road in their country. So thank you. Now we have with us Professor Sikander from my alma mater, Lahore University of Management Sciences, who will ask the next question. Thank you for the introduction. I first of all, first of all would like to uh, 
uh, thank uh, Senator Mushahid Hussain and Mustafa Saeed for uh, absolutely, uh, you know, arranging an absolutely fantastic uh, meet and conference. It's it's been a it's been a learning process, immense learning process. Uh, my question is actually for the His Honorable Excellency uh, Non Rong. Uh, the, ambassador, the Chinese ambassador. Uh, Deputy Chairman Planning Commission, uh, Mr. Mohammad Janzeb Khan, in detail and comprehensively discussed how the second phase of the CPEC is going to be created in Pakistan. And I think it was, it was highly informative. But my question actually relates to uh, what do we expect, what regional connectivity in concrete terms do we expect from CPEC in its second phase? So this is more a question of uh, the Chinese ambassador. Thanks for your question. This is a very good question. China-Pakistan Economic Corridor has been focused on energy, infrastructure, and especially transportation in the first phase. And in the first phase of CPAC, we have achieved great progress in these two aspects. Under CPAC, transportation infrastructure has greatly transformed the interconnectivity from north to south in Pakistan. And it also includes the friendship roads in the second phase, as well as the Lahore Orange Metro Line which links the roads of Pakistan. It also includes the Wada port. The construction in the port has been operated together with its supporting airports and roads linking the airport. All the transportation infrastructures have not only upgraded the transportation for the domestic situation in Pakistan, but also ushering a new era for the interconnectivity for Pakistan and the surrounding nations. We are pleased to see that the Guada port has began its transport business with Afghanistan, we believe in this aspect, the business and the functions in Guada port will be further enhanced. Not long ago, the Shanghai Cooperation Summit, here the Chinese President Xi Jinping has said that to promote the BRI and its cooperation with other countries as well as with other regions, we should correlate these programs and policies. We noticed that the transportation infrastructure program under CPAC has been paid great attention by the neighboring countries in this region. As the second phase of CPAC took place, we believe that this structure will further be promoted and strengthen the interconnectivity in this area so as to play a important role in the economic growth in this area. And thank you for the question as well. Of course, the second phase um, is going to determine uh, to a great extent the future of Pakistan's development. So thank you for expressing your response, Ambassador. With this, we will be concluding today's event. I would firstly like to thank all of our partners and participants, all of the honorable people who made themselves available for today's event, 
who made today's event and the deepening of China-Pakistan relations through media cooperation, through information exchange possible. So thank you once again. This is the end of the sixth CPEC Media Forum. I hope today's event will inspire many of you who are journalists watching mm -hmm. to explore more media development opportunities in the digital economy and also support the development of CPEC. Again, thank you for your participation and support. Long live the friendship between our two brotherly nations, China and Pakistan. Until next time, goodbye.